Hey guys, I'm Sarah Veek. I'm one of the instructors at Belgio Arts. I've been making work for over a decade and um, I'm excited you guys are here so that I can demo a cylinder for you. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I have um, about a pound of clay here. We're gonna do a basic cylinder cup shape today. Um, you'll notice that I'm standing to throw, so I'll be controlling the pedal um, with my right hand as opposed to my foot. I'm going to take a little bit of water right into the middle of the bat, maybe a pea-sized amount. We don't want too much, um, so I'm going to take my lump of clay and just smack it onto the middle. Now to give it a couple of good smacks to make sure it really stays on there. And I'm going to get the clay, I'm going to get the wheel going. Clay spinning. And I go slow to medium here, and I take my finger and just seal up that right there where the bat meets the clay. That way the water doesn't go under it and hydroplane, and the clay doesn't go flying off. So once it's on there really good, we're gonna do the first step, which is centering. Centering is to get the clay nice and consistent so that our walls are even on both, all sides. So everybody centers a little bit different. I switch between a few different methods. So I start by taking my hands around the ball of clay and just kind of rubbing them up and down to smooth it out. And then I squeeze. So I'm kind of squeezing here, overlapping my fingers, and I'm taking my thumbs and pressing straight down. So they're putting pressure here, while at the same time I'm putting pressure with as the clay is sitting into this sort of curve of my hand. Now I like to go a little bit faster with centering. And I'm just gonna keep pushing. At the same time, you'll notice with centering that you don't see a whole lot of movement with my hands, but the work is getting done. So I'm just smoothing those sides. I like to always keep a thumb in the middle so it's pushing down at the same time my fingers are pushing down the sides of the clay. So I'll go from there to also pushing straight down, sort of this karate chop straight down onto the clay. And at the same time, my left hand is at nine o'clock pushing in. So when we do that, I like to clasp my thumbs and I'm pushing at nine o'clock, and at the same time that hand on top is pushing down. We always wanna make sure too that we come off of the clay really easy, so really easy on and really easy off, so that we don't push it back out of center. So now that I have it mostly centered, you can kind of start to tell, because it won't wobble and it's not wonky. If you put your finger here, right next to it, it shouldn't touch at any point should be nice and smooth. So our second step is to open it up. So I'm gonna kind of let my let the clay draw my fingers in. I'm gonna create a little indention, a little belly button. And so that's, I like to do that because then I know it's right in the center. Sometimes if you go in a little too fast, it might be off a little bit. So then I'm gonna take my thumbs. I take both my thumbs to open it up. So before I let them completely come apart, I'm going to make sure and check my bottom. This is a good habit to get into as a beginner. You want to have you know, at least a quarter of an inch or so. So I'm going to stop my wheel, take my needle tool, I'm just going to come down with it and where my finger meets the clay come up and see about how thick I am. So that's about good. We don't want to go much thinner. I'd rather have it a little bit thick and be able to trim it than too thin. So I'm going to put my thumbs back in there and I'm going to let them move from each other. The same picture on that map. And then I have my bottom. So I want to keep this a taller, more narrow cup. So I'm going to have a narrower bottom. If you go really wide with the bottom, you're going to have a much squattier, wider cup. 
the time that you need to kind of decide what you want your cylinder to look like. So I'm just going back and forth and compressing. And at the same time, I'm using, keeping my left hand just kind of laid here, so it's just giving it a little bit of counter pressure. So now that I have my bottom, I'm gonna do our next move, which just kind of helps to pull the walls up a little bit. Um, I call it the volcano move get the, sh the clay into more of a narrow top and wider base and it's not really to get the clay um, up as much because we'll do that in the next step but we want to have it pretty consistent as far as thickness before we keep going so this is step three and so you're gonna take your hand right in front and I take my thumbs uh, thumb on the outside. This is with my left hand, and my right hand is going to be the pressure on the outside at that three o'clock point. So our goal is to kind of really, you're going to really want to get bendy here and take that thumb and move the clay up this ramp of your finger. So it's going to sit right in front of you, and in one movement, while your right hand pushes in, that thumb is going to push the clay up. And then we're going to compress the top. And then I like to do it maybe one more time for that thumb. As you can see how my thumb is moving up. And then compress the top. So that way I have this really nice and consistent as far as thickness. And then my fourth step will be to start moving the cup, the walls up so that I get more of a cup shape less of this sort of volcanic shape. So now I want you to kind of imagine this is a this is totally clear, maybe a piece of glass. And if you were taking your hands on both sides of the glass and wanting to make sure they lined up. So you want to make sure that your, your goal is to pull this clay up with pressure and the same speed with both hands. So if my fingers down here are meeting, so my pointer finger is meeting that pointer finger on the inside, it's engaging, so it's a deliberate move, and it's coming up very slow, because my wheel isn't going very fast, but if my wheel is going faster, then I need to speed my hands up a little bit, so they need to be going at the same amount of speed. So I'm going to do it again. Engaging my pointer finger. I like to keep my thumb out here so that my hands are always connected. And then they're pushing in and coming up together. And then I don't I don't squeeze too much at the top because I like to have a nice lip on it. And I always easy on, so just like I showed you, easy on, easy off. I'm coming off this top really easy so you don't pinch the lip. I'm going to speed my wheel up just a little bit, go a little faster on this pull. Again, you can see me really engaging at the bottom, squeezing in, and that inside hand is doing the same work as the outside, and they're coming up really slowly and together, getting to the top, meeting, and then smoothing the lip, and coming off. So my we want it to be nice and even our walls. You'll see I kind of pulled my elbow up. It's not against my side anymore as it gets taller. This I think is going to be my last pull. Come up. They meet at the top. Compress that lip so it's nice and smooth. Even though you're going to trim it later. And 
then I'm gonna lower my speed a little bit. I'm gonna take one of my ribs, this is my tall rib, and I'm just gonna push into it so I get it nice and smooth. I'm just, see, I'm just putting pressure on the inside, pressing it against that rib, and that helps to smooth it out. I get to the top. Make it kind of how you want it.